Welcome back to the channel. This video is on environmental science and we're looking at the environmental site assessment, the ESA, a step-by-step -step systematic and organized approach to IDing a site that is deemed to be hazardous or polluted or contaminated and then going through a sequence of steps in order to make this site clean and usable for the future. So let's go through and look at what the ESA is. This is the Earth Science Classroom. In any science discipline, subject or educational situation, it's important to understand the terms, the vocab and the words that are used in order to have a better understanding of the whole subject. So pollution is pretty much any matter or energy which accumulates faster than it is being removed. And the situation in this site becomes polluted and therefore harmful to the environment and both any plants and animals that are in this particular site. The term remediation refers to the process or the act of recovering an environment, a site, and removing and treating the given contaminants or given pollutants in that area in order to restore the area to prior conditions. The term contamination refers to the action or the process of creating a polluted site, adding a hazardous material to degrade or decrease the level of environmental quality. The word hazardous refers to a level of danger and consequence of the pollution of the various contaminations that would produce a harmful environment for any organic material, both in the physical, the biological or the chemical sense in that particular location. So pollution, contamination and the word hazardous all refer to the descriptions of what can harm the environment. Remediation is a word that means to increase the quality, to remove the pollution, to reduce the contamination, and to dispose of and remove any hazardous material. So this is the key terms for this video. The ESA, or the Environmental Site Assessment, is a standardized nationwide process to clean up a certain site that is deemed to be polluted or contaminated or hazardous to both humans and the natural environment, including both the physical environment and the species that inhabit this location. And this sequence occurs in three phases. Phase one is the site investigation, where they go and inquire about this certain site. Phase two, is a comprehensive investigation of that site. And phase three, the final phase in the ESA, is remediation action plan and long-term monitoring of the environment. So phase one of the ESA begins with it being administered by a qualified environmental assessment professional, someone who's been qualified and has a license in this field of expertise. It can't be done by anyone it has to be done by an authorized person or persons. Now the site is inspected under cooperation from the current owner or the operator in terms of the legal rights of the land and the site or any previous owner that may have owned it in the past in terms of the legal requirements. And this is going to provide all necessary paperwork and permits and contracts, anything on the site history that can be used by the assessment professional and gather as much information and data on the site as possible. Now the EPA in 2006 amended CERCLA through the federal government to ensure that these site assessments can be done in more frequency because prior to 2006 there was a lot of fear, legal and liability fear, from many owners and property controllers that they would be held responsible for anything that was found on that site in terms of anything that's hazardous or contaminated and the bill would be substantial so a lot of people would be denying and refusing these qualified personnel to come on their site to conduct the phase one of the ESA 
Thankfully, Circular amended this, allowing the owners to have cooperation to really find out who's at fault if they found any hazardous or polluted contaminants in that site. So phase one is all about investigation, observations, and creating a report. And it's evaluated and it's done for the potential for an REC to be conducted on that site. And REC is a recognized environmental condition. So looking at whether it's worth the time of the EPA and the personnel who is licensed to go ahead and then start the actual phase two cleanup. And this phase one happens in four parts. The history and required info, done. Reconnaissance, on-site inventory of what's there, observations, notes, and looking at also the surrounding area. Is there any migration? Is there any issues with air quality and water migration, both on the surface and groundwater? from any initial observations, any hydrology issues in terms of the water table or any kind of rivers and streams that interact with the site, even the climate, even the seasons. Then the collaboration between the local government, the federal government, state government in terms of what to do with this site. And this all goes into an initial report that is going to give a final verdict of whether this site is deemed okay and not progressed in phase two or deemed worthy of moving it into phase two, meaning that there has been observed and documented pollution and hazardous and contaminated material on the site and needs remediation. Phase two only is started or initiated because of a completed phase one report that deems the site necessary to start remediation processes. Now this is a longer, drawn out, more time consuming phase of the ESA compared to phase one. Phase one is just the observation and investigation. Now phase two, we're looking at taking samples, looking at a comprehensive analysis of what is polluting the environment, what the contaminants are, the type, the level, degree, the concentration, the issues of migration through any kind of subsurface flow of soil, water, leaching, groundwater, aquifers, looking at gas surveys, looking at getting samples of the soil, getting up samples of the surface water, any depression deposits, any kind of water flowing over the surface, looking at getting boring samples and geophysical surveys of the area in terms of the contour lines, the gradients, even the composition of the bedrock and also the soil composition in more detail. All of this is done over a long time. The reason for collecting all these samples of the site is to determine how to clean up the pollutants that are present. What's the best method and approach to their remediation in order to clean up this site? That's why phase two is so important to gather information on what actually is polluting this particular site. Phase three follows along from phase two, and this is all about the cleanup. So once you have established through phase two, all the sampling and figured out what you have to deal with in terms of the contaminants, the pollutants, the hazardous material, the level concentration, the spread migration, all that stuff is established. Then you have to basically figure out where you want to put the border or the boundary in which you want to work, where the remediation is going to take place. So this is called delineation of the site, where you map out where you want to work and apply all of the different approaches to correctly and effectively remediate and clean up the area from the pollution. Once you have cleaned up everything as best you can based on the pollutants, you're going to produce a long-term assessment whereby you're going to monitor the site for a long time and this would require further samples, further testing to ensure the pollutants are eliminated or decreased to an acceptable EPA standard and a final report is then submitted to all the parties involved stating that this site has been cleared or passed through the Remedial Action Plan, or RAP, and it is then safe to use. Step two of phase three includes the application of different methods, different techniques to clean up 
the contaminants or the pollutants that are present in this site. And there are two main areas to remediate. There's the soil and the groundwater. The soil has various approaches, various methods in order to clean up the soil. So the first one is excavation and you remove anything that is contaminated within the soil, which is ex situ approach. Ex situ means you just remove in the contaminated material away from the site. Next, you have bioremediation, which is kind of an awesome thing. We use more of a natural approach using organic matter. You plant in different species of plants and using algae and bacteria to naturally clean up any contaminants that are found there. Again, it's based on the contaminants. You can't use it for everything. Then you have thermal treatment, which is basically you add heat to the soil. You fuse and combine through heat the contaminants and then dispose of appropriately. Then you have the vacuum treatment, which is awesome because literally you just suck out any contaminants. Then you have vitrification, which is applying heat, similar to thermal, but you're applying heat to melt the contaminants and also break down chemical bonds, which then would allow for easier removal and perhaps the level of contamination and hazardous nature of the pollutants would change when you start to melt and realign those chemical bonds. Then you have soil washing, which is where you remove the soil and then put the soil through a chemical wash, pretty much, and it will filter out the soil from the pollutants and contaminants. Then you have the groundwater methods. You have carbon absorption, which basically means you're just adding in carbon to bind with the pollutants to, again, remove any kind of hazardous level of material. Then you have inline filters, where you actually put in these large filters into the groundwater, and they would filter in all the contaminants. The air stripper and air treatment are similar, where you are basically pumping in fresh air, either over the top or inside the rock layers in the groundwater, and that fresh air is going to basically migrate and push and clean the groundwater as the air moves through it, called sparging. So there are various ways in which an ESA certified person can approach the site based on the contaminants, based on the concentration, based on the hazardous degree of those pollutants, and choose the correct and appropriate method or the combination of methods in order to eliminate the pollution and clean the site. So in conclusion, the ESA or Environmental Site Assessment is a standardized, controlled, and organized three-phase system of cleaning up any site deemed potentially hazardous with contamination or pollution in order to eliminate such pollution and contamination and allow the site to be reused in the future. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.